Uh, Vivi? Yeah. He has, okay. At, at least once. All right. So it's like, at least pass. there's that. You yeah, know, but I, it, yeah, I would still consider it probably an upset because Venny has been getting second and sometimes third a lot lately. And DV has not been getting that. At the very least in terms of ranking. This yeah, quarter, is, Venny's not second in all of them. It's every single one. Yeah, every oh, grant has been Venny Adil. I know yeah. that. That was like... I, I knew the past three have been that way, but I didn't know if there was like another one where he got third. Yeah, the past three have been all this quarter. Yeah, like I definitely have not watched every the, the single quarter, Zeno just... since then, but like... The ones I've seen, he's just died super early. And speaking of dying early, Zane already killed Utopian. Roofed him off the top. Doing, I, doing what Bayonetta does. There you go, man. You know, Zane rocking uh, one of the few Bayonettas in New York City. Yeah, that is very true, actually. This is yep. not the land of the barrels. There used to be a time when New York City just sucked against Bayonetta because no one played the character, so no one knew the matchup. So thankfully, we do have people like Zane coming out here into the bracket, just trying to like show us that, OK, I, I know how to play this character. Just a little bit. Fighting off against Utopian Ray's Rosalina. Now, I remember DeBuzz has said in the past that he feels insanely comfortable fighting Bayonetta as a Rosalina man, so maybe Ray feels the same way. I, I can imagine, you know, Rosa players feeling a little comfortable. I mean, they, in a sense, do a little bit of the same thing. I mean, Rose can kill off the top super duper early, and Rosa, at the very least, can keep her distance more against uh, Bayonetta with that Luma. Speaking of Luma, that's, that's a dead one right there. With that Luma, just and can still apply that same corner pressure that Rosalina can apply to a lot of other characters. So I feel like in this matchup, Rosalina still has a lot of things that she can do against Bayonetta that she could do against a lot of other characters. And with most other characters in this game, it's not really the case against Bayonetta because Bayonetta just shuts down a lot of options. But Rosa, being the amazing character that she is, she still has some, she still has some tools up her sleeve against uh, Bayonetta. Just like that one right there, down throw upper, still gonna work. The patented combo, patented to Buzz combo, Utopian Ray combo, uh, J combo. Uh, Kirihawa combo, all the Roses combo, just the patented Rosa combo. I think it's combo, just you know a Rosalina it combo. <laughs> I think it might just be a Rosalina combo. Very astute observation, Alistair. There you go, but get all that. of a sudden, game's uh, relatively even. It's like a percent difference from, uh, from Zane compared to Utopian Ray right now. About uh, almost 100, actually, but maybe down, but he's definitely not out. There you go, catching him on the ledge with that forward air, trying to push him out. But now Ray's without a Luma. Spawns back in, trying to get back down to the ground. Uses the downer to apply some hit stun so he can feel insanely comfortable down there. Not this letting him touch Rosa the ground. Brings games back. Mm -hmm. This is how she brings games back. She just that Luma spawns after a mere 13 seconds of being away and will just kill you at all sorts of wonky percents that you feel like you shouldn't have died at. But something a little more solid. Bayonetta's back here, gonna be able to take that first uh, stock, that, uh, that second stock, that first game against Utopian uh, Ray right there. Zane going up against him, and he is going to ban FD for his pleasure. Probably now, to make his landings a little easier. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that like that entire like last section when he was just connecting up air after up air, he was recognizing that Zane ran out of jumps the, like, the entirety, so he was like, okay, I gotta abuse this. Don't let him touch the ground, because the second he touches the ground, he gets all of her jumps back, and that, he doesn't want that. We got Cloud coming up from Ray, opting to go to Battlefield, one of Cloud's best stages. Seeing this a lot lately, people will like counter pick Battlefield with their pocket cloud. And I can understand this. I know Cloud can actually keep up with Bayo I mean Rosalina as well, but Cloud also has that potential. Yeah. And despite the uh, stage layout, you know, and this is like it's not exactly a completely common belief among lower level players, but some people may look at Battlefield and they might assume, oh, it's probably easier to land on this stage because like it has all these platforms here for me to land on. But in retrospect, it just gives a character with an up air as amazing as clouds all the time in the world to react to where you're going, all the space in the world to like, all the space in the world to outmaneuver wherever you're going to go. It's, and you know, he's gonna be living longer off the top too because Battlefield is the highest vertical blast zone out of all the legal stages that we play on in our great game of Smash 4. So contrary to that uh, to that myth, if you would, it's it's not always really the best choice against Cloud. He can juggle you here pretty much just as easily, if not sometimes easier than he can on a lot of the other stages. And right now, I mean, he's, not, he's having kind of a hard time just getting back to center stage. Oh, that was very risky it. coming from Zane. I respect it, Alstie. He was, I mean, that, that's like a classic edge guarding thing, right? You have him cornered against the ledge. What are they going to do? The goal is to try to get center stage as fast as possible. So a roll in is like a very common option, you'll see. 
Yeah, you know, it's a very, it, it's a solid read to go through. Like you said, it's still definitely risky because you've committed to an option like mm. Bayonetta's up smash, which is definitely laggy if, if you're with it or you don't uh, connect with it, obviously. But it is a very solid read to go for anyway, because like you said, you know, like you wanted stage control back and that's two back airs should do it. No, not going to do it. Battlefield so big. And he was thinking about landing a third one too. He wanted to do something else because he was thinking in the back of his mind, this is not going to kill. He should have absolutely landed, uh, not, not maybe not landed as that up smash, uh, run up up smash is going to do it. He should have at least gone for that third back air because like, worst comes to worst, he misses that back air as that up air is going to slowly but surely, very delayed, taking that uh, stock off the top right there. What's, what's the risk? You know, he's already flying that far from the second back air. You know, just go for the third one. If it misses, he's still going to be like, he's still going to fly all the way to the blast zone. Mm -hmm. So basically all you're doing is just trying to get insurance for the kill. But apparently Zane thought it was enough, elected not to go for that back air, and eventually he wound up losing his stock because of it. So sometimes, I think that's a really good example of like, when uh, players aren't like so sure of themselves. There's such a thing as overconfidence, and there's also such a thing as playing a little too scared and being a little too fearful and not going in. And that emotional state can sometimes make all the difference in these types of matches, especially when you're a player like Zane going up against Utopia and Ray, you know, which would technically be an upset as well in its own right, you know which some players can get really nervous about as well when they're doing good against a player who's ranked above them or is considered better than them, you know. But he unfortunately hesitated just a little bit with that one. He's going to lose his stock for it, but it might not matter. No, Utopian Ray, able to find his way back down. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you were mentioning something about the mental game and how he, like, the mental state's so important mm -hmm. in a 1v1 game. And that's exactly what Ray's trying to go through. He's like, I'm going to go for this cloud and just try to mix it up. He's got my 111%. I like that he didn't go for the third jab. If he went that, for that third jab, he'd be in a very awful spot off stage. So it would have been a free grab. Often just roll away and say he's got that limit ready to go. Just catches the jump with the blade beam. Raise opportunity. Just build him as fast as possible. Already got half of it. Mm, so close. I actually really like he the cross He committed to the whole the cross uh, Just, he did it a little bit too high. He was, trying to find, he was trying to find his way, put himself maybe like halfway, put Cloud's body at least halfway through the platform, wound up landing on it instead, mm. and that made that uh, what would have been a relatively, or arguably like kind of safe option, yeah, completely that's unsafe. Just, that's all of a so sudden. terrible. Yeah. The reason he committed to the full swing is he was trying to, he's like, he was caught in a bad spot. So he's like, well, what if I just hesitate, then go for it to try to mix it up just in case it get a little bit antsy. 